Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% of show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, how Afghan women soldiers fear the potential return of the Taliban to the country's political scene could end their lives in the military. Also, the need for equality to work both ways, with Norwegian men being actively encouraged to seek jobs in female-dominated sectors. And the rise of what's been dubbed Moroccan gold, how argan oil has become a highly sought-after ingredient in the global cosmetics industry, while also transforming the lives of Moroccan women. But we begin in Afghanistan, which after 40 years is still a battleground, with terror attacks being carried out daily by the Taliban and the Islamic State group. After lengthy negotiations, it seems the return of peace could be synonymous with the possible political return of the Taliban. However, will the Islamists ever accept the fact that the Afghan army now has women within its ranks? This, as the military has become one of the few places in the country where women can pursue a career, as our team on the ground report. It's an ambush. Despite the glacial winds, Nafaz Gul must react quickly. The exercise is part of a training for these student officers at Kabul's military academy. Among them are 73 women. They defy social taboos and have often faced threats for wanting to be part of the Afghan army, an extremely dangerous job in this country which has been at war for 40 years. But for some, their motivations are as much financial as ideological. My husband left me, so I'm raising a two-year-old on my own. I joined the army for my son's future as well as mine. I'll earn a decent salary while also helping to make the country a safer place. Here, men and women train side by side, which is exceptional in a country where many women can't work, marry, seek medical treatment or even leave the house without their male relative's consent. Since the female section of the academy was created five years ago, 215 female officers have graduated. But this program might be short-lived. In Qatar, Taliban and American delegations are holding talks to settle on a peace plan. The U.S. has agreed that all foreign troops will leave the country within three to five years, and ideas like integrating the extremist group in a future government are being floated, leaving many women fearing for their future. If the Taliban agree to peace, that's great, but if they return to power, I'm scared they'll ban women from joining the army. I've made too many sacrifices to let them get in my way. If they come for us, we will fight until the end. After several hours in the snowstorm, the students have a quick lunch. Those who have children can take care of them in the dorms. Then it's time for class. Male and female students gather again to learn subjects like English, strategy and field operation. In the end, most women will only be given admin jobs in Kabul, but 20-year-old Zahra hopes to make it to a combat unit on the front line. I joined the army because of the crisis in our country and women are being mistreated. This is my way of trying to bring change. Our male colleagues treat us like their sisters. I've never had an unpleasant experience here. In a country where 80% of women are illiterate, the military academy offers a rare opportunity for its students. But Major Fatma Sadat, who runs the female section, says the many obstacles faced by women in civilian life impacts their achievements at the academy. Some girls have a high school diploma, but their education is still quite poor. Girls' education isn't a priority in some families. They have trouble writing and lag behind in class. Others hide the fact that they're married when they sign up. So if they have obligations at home or become pregnant, they can't keep up in the field activities. Another threat women face in the Afghan security forces is sexual harassment and violence. The army has no anti-harassment policy and it remains a huge taboo. Some high-ranking men abuse their power. They say, you didn't pass that class, but if we become friends, I could ignore that. Or if a female soldier needs something, a male officer might ask for a certain favour. This exists in every institution, but it's a huge problem in the army. It's always the high-ranking man they'll believe, not the woman. Sexual harassment exists in armies around the world. 
But in Afghanistan, where gender-based violence is already rampant in civilian life, the problem is unlikely to be solved quickly. Despite these hurdles, women represent 1.4 percent of Afghan security forces. A promising start, but whether or not that number will rise might very well depend on the Taliban. To Norway now, where an increasing number of men are taking up traditionally female jobs. The government says such moves are necessary to achieve true equality in the workplace. Clement Bonnero has more. It's an obsession in Norway. When it comes to promoting gender equality, the country is often held up as a model. From politics to waste management and corporate boards, women have succeeded in jobs traditionally held by men. But now Norway is facing yet another challenge. To encourage men to work in female-dominated industries, such as healthcare and childcare, this daycare centre in Oslo has a strict gender equality policy. At least 50% of its employees are men. <laughs> Matthias Eldorf was hired seven years ago. He plays with children and looks after them, just like his female colleagues. The job entails the same, uh, no matter what sex you are. So uh, we do exactly the same things. Everyone changes diapers, for instance. I know that's a bit weird in some countries. I would say it's more like archaic uh, thought process of um, uh, that taking care of children is, uh, is the woman's job. Parents, too, see the benefits of this approach. Well, I think it's a good thing to have a nice balance between men and women at the workplace. I think it's good for the children and good for the work environment. <laughs> this is normal for us. I mean, uh, today women do the men's job, the men, they do the women's job. Attitudes are changing slowly in Norway. An increasing number of men are now choosing to work with children. Sigurd said he actually loves his job. Yet, like many others, he still faces prejudice. The kindergarten teacher does not have a, a huge... Uh, you know, a societal st stay standing. You know, uh, uh, it's not very prestigious to be a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. Men make up around 10% of the total workforce in childcare, healthcare and elder care. To get those numbers up, Norway's government has passed a law that allows employers to favour men over equally qualified women. This quiet town in the outskirts of Oslo, meanwhile, has launched a training scheme for men to become nursing assistants. Stian Trokstad is 37 and used to work as a salesman. I've been an entrepreneur, so my job has been my life at some point. But, but this gives me so much pleasure and so much energy. And uh, it is uh, it's just a wonderful job. I hope you can, Katrina, for it can I. It's a big change for Stian and also for this retirement home, where 98% of employees are female. The manager says hiring more men is now a top priority. He alone can't balance it, uh, but, <laughs> but he, he comes as uh, something else. Uh, he has uh, different views, maybe. These few men show that, yeah, OK, you can be a man and work in this in this environment, you can work in this, this kind of department. The gender pay gap in Norway is already one of the lowest in the world. But the fight for equality continues. And finally, anybody interested in beauty products would have seen the rise and rise of Moroccan argan oil. It's become the shining star of the global cosmetics industry. But the product's popularity has also helped to turn around the lives of many Moroccan women who now earn a living from it. Hidden deep in these trees, the keys to professional success and emancipation for dozens of Moroccan women. Their unassuming nuts are used to produce argan oil, now a major part of the lucrative global cosmetics business. In the southwestern Moroccan village of Taiganimin, women in particular are taking advantage of a growing worldwide demand for so-called liquid gold. 
In 2006, a group of them established their own cooperative to produce cosmetic goods from argan trees. Thanks to the initiative, the 105 exclusively female members now have a steady income and are pushing the envelope in terms of gender roles in relatively conservative communities. Thanks to this cooperative, they have a revenue that will help every woman get what they need for themselves and their children. We have widows as well as divorcees, and even married women are helping their husbands. But our main victory is that we managed to convince men that a working woman is there to help them, not to be against them. The Taiganimin Cooperative is just one of several women's associations now flourishing in the argan producing region. Despite the gender-based focus, the groups benefit entire local communities, from the rural women working directly with the crops to the male and female scientists working in cosmetics laboratories. Despite undeniable progress, some roadblocks remain. The primarily Berber women who harvest the nuts only receive a small share of the profits, most of which still go to middlemen and large corporations. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France 24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.